One of my favorite things to decorate with are antique pieces. I found these antique oars at an old shop here in town. And I think now when you see this, it really ties into the coastal theme, but it's not going too far to where it feels kind of cheesy. Another thing I wanted to carry on was just the idea of driftwood. We literally went to the lake and found some old pieces of driftwood. I thought it would make a really cool design statement in their fireplace, you know, in the hotter months when they're not actually burning fire in here. It's just a fun design element that adds that extra coastal feel. One of the rooms that I really feel like carries this theme the best is this dining room. Things like this light fixture with the jute hanging from it this lighter wood top table, and even this artwork that my friend Clayton did. All these elements together really give off that coastal vibe that my client was wanting. The Armorium Project was a fun challenge because they had a style in mind for their home that I really wanted to implement without it feeling like too much of a theme, which was a little bit tough to do because my client was really wanting a coastal themed home. And now when you walk in, you don't feel like you're in Central Texas. You feel like the ocean could be in the backyard. When designing with the coastal theme for the Armoyan project, I didn't want to go too literal with it. So I used simple, thoughtful details to tie it all together and keep the design relaxed and calming, not overwhelming. I really love how quaint and cozy it is in here. The color on the walls I decided to use was a lighter blue gray tone, but it still has that fresh clean way about it. When you're trying to carry on a theme, you can keep it subtle. We have the sand and these really cool hurricane jars, fun little glass things with seashells. My client loves shells, the lamps with the rope, but also this driftwood that we found um, here in Waco. It's stuff like this that I think even though we're in Texas, you can still have what you want. Let's check out the master bathroom. I really like this bathroom because it's not overbearing. There's a lot of texture going on and a lot of dimension, but it's not too much. I love these fun pendant lights that we chose, these rotating mirrors. We use a really light palette in here, softer gray on the floor. One of the things I love the most in this bathroom is this new shower that we got for our clients. We've got this really cool basket weave on the wall and then we have these fun pebbles on the floor We've made their shower twice as big, but with this glass and all this texture, I just really feel like it makes a huge statement in this bathroom. I did manage to make some friends with a couple of guys who are a lot like me, and those friendships helped me get through the first year, but my heart just wasn't there. I got this little notebook and started journaling, writing songs, sketching out business plans, I'd spend hours in my apartment writing down my thoughts and ideas in that thing. I'd never done that before, but this was strangely therapeutic. I wish I could actually find that notebook. I would love for Joe to see that thing since it's so fitting for her personality. That was the only season in my entire life I ever tried to do any of those artsy type things. I was just trying to express something that needed to come out. Maybe it was my way of dealing with some loneliness. I wanted out of that junior college. And luckily enough, a recruiter from Baylor University happened to be in the stands when I made one of the greatest plays of my entire career. I was playing second base, and I made this diving grab on a shot between first and second base. Then somehow I twisted around as I slid through the dirt to make this monster throw and get the runner out at first. That recruiter offered to get me into Baylor University and to make sure I would have a spot in the athletic dorm. I honestly couldn't even tell you if they covered my books because I didn't care. I took it. I was ready to leave North Lake and take a fresh start. As it turned out, I loved Baylor. I loved being around all those rich kids, even if I was nothing like them. I loved the girls. I loved the campus. I wasn't a very good student, and I struggled to pass every single semester. But I did fall in love with the city of Waco and started to see myself in that pretty little town forever, especially once I started mowing lawns. It's funny, here I was at this prestigious school playing baseball and studying business. But instead of daydreaming about major leagues or running some Fortune 500 company, I found myself in class looking out the window at these guys mowing grass and wishing I could trade places with them. My junior year at Baylor, I decided that was exactly what I was going to do. I wasn't going to quit school. I would stay and finish my degree in business. But I wanted to go out and make real money, like I did as a kid. And not just in the summertime. The way I did with the book company and the fireworks stand. I wanted to work while I was going to school, to get outdoors, to start my own business maybe. And I knew I was going to have to give something up if I wanted to go find the time to do that. Turned out, the thing I needed to give up 
gave up on me first. A new coach came to Baylor and decided he wanted to make some major changes, so I was gone, along with a bunch of other guys who were on a partial scholarship. And just like that, everything changed. My dad was all fired up about me transferring to another school or finding another scholarship, and a few of my baseball buddies would go on to do just that and have great success. But I wasn't interested in chasing baseball all over the country. I had already seen the writing on the wall. I was a good baseball player, but I wasn't good enough to turn this into a full-time career. It just wasn't meant to be. It was time for me to move on. I dreaded telling my dad, though. He had spent all those years throwing those balls to me for hours and hours every day. He'd come to every single one of my games, going all the way back to when I was just a little kid. And when I grew older, he'd acted almost as an agent or a manager when it comes time to talking to schools or considering my future in the sport. He was so proud of me, and knowing I was going to let him down was pretty hard for me. I put off that conversation for as long as I could, just worrying and worrying myself to death over how he was going to react. When I finally told him, I had tears in my eyes. But my dad looked at me and said, Son, I love you. And if you're telling me baseball's out, then that's okay by me. It was this beautiful conversation. He was concerned about what I was going to focus on, and I was too. My whole life had been about baseball. And when he asked me what I wanted to do, I told him, I have no idea. I told him I wanted to go out, maybe earn some money, possibly start a business. And all he said to me was, whatever I did, he hoped I was dedicated to it as I'd been to baseball. He wanted me to go out and hit the proverbial 100 balls a day and to give it all I had no matter what I was doing. I just remember vividly for the first time in my life, really knowing in my heart of hearts that my dad loved me no matter what I was doing. It wasn't tied to baseball. It wasn't tied to something I did or didn't do. It was just this awesome feeling to realize that. And to this day, that is one of the best conversations I've ever had with my old man. I think I learned another lesson that day too. Sometimes worrying about something is much worse than the actual thing you're worrying about. 